to be our light. He wants to feed us with the bread of, bread of life. Um, and he requires of us holy, meaningful praise, worship, and prayer. He also told me that each day we awake, we have a task, task to accomplish. And sometimes we might not actually get to that task, but there's no cutting corner around God. We need to just do, do what God wants from us and the, the way he wants us to do it. Um, the third task was about the, um, the, the priests and their garments. And Aaron, it was only Aaron and his descendants that could actually be um, a high priest, praise the Lord. And the Levites, they were set apart for the leadership in the tabernacle. And that also so told me that although as a church, we are called and we are, you know, called to minister unto the people, but there, God also sets apart people who are holy and committed and wants to do God's work for him. And praise the Lord, let's also leave these two verses with you from First Peter um, chapter 2, from verse 5. Ye also, as living stones, are built of a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer us spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Pray for us in Jesus' name. And I found it quite different. Um, it was a new way of putting across like, another to topic of the Bible. I learnt many things like the significance of colours, materials, numbers, and like that there was set there was set rules to what like the priest could wear or like how big the the, the furniture in the tabernacle could be. Um, as the project was broken up into different parts, it was like easier to understand and to even complete. And I think it was an in inspiring way of knowing God's word, and I enjoyed it thoroughly and even with a willing heart. I never saw it as a chore, like homework, like that you get at school, but I actually wanted to do it. And I think it's a reflection of our Christian lives. And because I know a lot of people who find like coming to church or like reading the Bible or even getting up and praying in the morning as a burden and they say, oh, it's interfering with my life. But as Christians, this should be our life, it's our priority. Because Jesus is our ultimate saviour and always will be. God gave his only begotten son for us. Now, I think that must be love. That is love. He gave his only son. And these are my few words. Brother Jordan, Brother Darren, and the twins and company come and see.
my faith and why it's important in life. As you can see, without faith, not many things through Christ are possible, or no, no things through Christ are possible. Like the example in Matthew 14, <coughs> verses 31. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, therefore didst thou doubt. As you can see, when you have faith and when you don't have faith, it shows to others. With Jesus, if you don't have faith, he can help you. Like, um, touched him with his garment and the lady that was healed. With faith, she made it. And without faith, there's nothing we can do through Christ. <coughs> My personal experience is when I got filled, <coughs> the day before I never had faith until Jordan told me, Jesus has, a, uh, Jesus has a way for you and if you come tomorrow believing, you will be filled and on that, on that same day, my faith grew stronger and I, I came and in that same hour, I, I got filled. So as you can see, without faith, nothing is possible. But with faith, anything is possible. These are my words of Jesus. Name. by Brother Craig, Brother Darren, and Brother Jordan. Finally, find her there 
in Jesus. It takes your heart. It takes for you to know yourself. You can't um, believe in anything until you believe in God and until you believe in yourself. And um, also, I remember my sister Cynthia Morris said that I don't look to please man, look to please God. And that's one thing that I've learned this year is that I've been too um, dependent on men to uh, I tend to care what people say about me or think about me and in the end it isn't going to benefit you no, 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 you won't get no wrong in life no, because no, if you have that mentality of someone's going to think that about you or someone's going to think this about you you won't get nowhere no, look to Jesus depend on Jesus because the Bible says that when your mother and your father forsake you, then the Lord will take you up. Even when your mother and your father forsake you, then the Lord will take you up. And also, um, at the beginning of this year, my friend, a lost, a loved one, um, he committed suicide. And it was a very draining experience for me to um, speak to her. But I've learned that if it wasn't for the message of God, then I wouldn't have given her um, Encouragement. It takes having the wisdom. It doesn't take um, wisdom for your own self, or was you won't benefit at all. So um, those are my words. I'm very nervous. Sorry, and I'm praying that God will keep us. And as we enter 2009, that God will strengthen us also, and that we do what He wants us to do. That we also unite in church because number one means to unite, unity. So also that we know whatever we do. And I love you, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. We thank you for showing up for her words of encouragement. I'm sure it must have been hard for her to stand here, but we give God thanks for her and how God has been blessing her. I will just continue to pray for her in Jesus' name. Can you just stand as we collect the night's offering? Lord, we give you thanks tonight for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy and for your grace. We ask that it as we give now, Lord, that you might bless it, that it might go to the first rose of your gospel. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We ask that we may sleep to come and sleep. Jesus lifted high. 